Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. Good to have you here. So I'm gonna do a new series called What Makes This Animation So Great? It's gonna be a breakdown series where we're gonna go over clips from animators all over the internet and talk about shots that they've done and what makes them so great. The idea here is to hopefully impart knowledge upon you or at least make you think a little bit on how some of these things were made, how you can apply some of this stuff to your own animation and make you a better animator. So. Let's get into it. All right, so for today's shot, the first one we're gonna do is from James Baxter, the one and only James Baxter. If you don't know who James Baxter is, I would recommend you go on the internet and research him. Now, the fact that you're here watching this, you probably know who James Baxter is and the amazing work he's done over the years. This clip is going to be from The Rescuers Down Under and it's this little cockroach character that he did. Um, and it, it's the kind of shot that you wouldn't expect maybe to be highlighted, right? But there's so much good stuff here. There's a lot to talk about and there's a lot to break down. And so I really wanna get into this and, and really highlight some of the things that I think are so great about uh, the use of principles here and how the shot is broken down into um, nice clean parts that we can kind of analyze and reverse engineer and hopefully things that you can take away with and put into your own work and, and things to think about. Obviously, one of the goals here is to, like I said, break down animation, but I really wanna give you something to really think about and to give you questions that you can find answers to so that when you're doing your own shots and you're, you're thinking about some of the things that aren't working or you're just kind of stuck, that maybe you can go watch these movies break them down and really think about like what makes them tick and then take that information back to your work and just really elevate your animation. Okay, so let's get into it and uh, break it down. Okay, so let's go through the shot a couple times. I'm just gonna play it through, let it kind of loop and just listen to the audio and, and just take the animation in for a moment for what it is. And then we're gonna kind of go through and look at some of my breakdown drawings that I've put I've done some drawovers, and then we'll also just kind of see what we see along the way. Here we go. Allow me, madame. I will tell him immediately. Allow me, madame. I will tell him immediately. Allow me, madame. I will tell him immediately. Very cool. Okay, so obviously the shot starts with a very neutral pose, right? And so you got to start somewhere. Okay, now if you notice in this shot here, our little character guy, he's going to be moving from the very beginning. And so the neutral pose at the beginning, the beginning pose, it's important because of where the character's going, but the pose itself, you know, um, you just wanna get something in there appealing and then make sure that that pose relationship is gonna work well with the next one. So let's pop into the next pose here. So this pose relationship right here is a really great example of kicking off the animation into the dialogue and getting some opposing force in there, some contrast, right? So you'll notice that the mouth shape goes from, again, neutral to then more open because of the dialogue. And then what James is doing here is he's creating basically a stretch pose. So you'll see the body elongate and the head is actually gonna drag behind as the body drops. And then you'll notice that the line of action through the body just basically continues through the antenna and just creates a really nice flow in shapes. And then you'll see also that the fingers basically are, are starting to pull in and kind of create that, that path of movement, that line of action that's gonna work really well with the body because of where the character's going, okay? So just to reiterate, we have basically our opposing force here where we have the body dropping, the head opening up, right? So that's the opposition, right? Opposing force um, or a stretch pose, okay? So we go to our third pose here and we kind of hit this bottom pose here and we're gonna squash, right? So we're going from basically that, that, that stretch pose then to that squash pose, okay? Um, hands come in, we're gesturing, head pushes down, right, okay? From here, we're gonna to start to push the body back up, okay? Now, 
what's really cool here is that we have the head somewhat push into the shoulders and into the body, right? Okay. So we're going to get basically um, that, that, more or less we're gonna get the drag, right? Because the body's leading the action. And in fact, the arms are actually starting to kind of lead the action here with the elbows. The elbows kind of are coming up here and leading the action as the body starts to rise. And then of course, like I said, the head squashes into the body because we're getting that that physics, right? That force push that's gonna kind of go, right? And the head just kind of sinks down right there. Now, what James did here, which is kind of cool is that we have a couple simple pose changes here already happening into 47. So now the body's going up into its next pose. So this is more or less, I would say, kind of a breakdown, right? Um, along the way, James has the head gesturing, okay? So we've got this nice little back and forth secondary action happening on the head to coincide with the acting choice right there, okay? Then from here, we go into this anticipation pose where the body opens up, okay? Again, the line of action through the body just leads up to the head out into the antenna. So we've got a really nice flow happening. And then the, the hands and arms are very nice, clean silhouettes, nice, clean hand poses. But again, you can see all the shapes, right? They're just all kind of pushing through and leading somewhere down into the body, right? So it's really a nice flow happening here. Um, and again, this is an anticipation pose because we're going to basically top out here and then we're going to go into our next action. OK, because the body is basically going to start to move screen left. OK. All right. So just to recap here, we've got our our breakdown here up into our anticipation pose. And now we're going to basically from here drop out and we're going to start to push screen left. Right. OK. But what's really cool here is that you can see this kind of motion happening on the body where He's not just going up and down, but he's starting to pivot the weight, okay? He's gonna pivot the weight over that right foot, okay? Screen left, right over here, okay? And then what happens now is, again, we're in a stretch pose, right? Because if you look, we're back here in the anticipation. Now the body's dropping. The head and the antenna basically are stretching the other way, right? And so are the hands here, okay? Um, so again, it's like this nice little thing where Everything is just kind of leading somewhere, okay? But we're gonna do it through those nice execution of the principles, right? Okay? All right, so now, again, opposing force because we've got the body dropping down and then the head is dragging behind. And then from here, we're gonna go down and um, we're gonna go to a simple weight shift pose here at the bottom, okay? But you'll notice there's a really strong sense of line of action in the body. And it's a very clean shape. And this is one of the things I love about 2D animation that I try to put into my 3D as much as possible is just shapes, like clean shapes as much as possible, like clean silhouettes and trying to keep things very simple for the most part. You know, I often joke about animation being one of those things that's a million principles and like concepts going into this very complicated thing to sell a very simple story, right? So keep things clean, keep things simple, simple shapes and just lead your audience along through pose relationships, okay? All right, so again, we've got this stretch pose here, culminating down into the, like this, more or less, it's it's a squash pose, I, I take it, right? More or less, but again, leads and follows, right? One thing we haven't talked about is leads and follows. So we always wanna think about breaking things up, right? So something's gonna lead, something's gonna follow. In this case here, you know, we've got this nice use of drag happening here on these antenna, right? And so the body's leading the action through here and then the antenna are following through, okay? So if we continue on to the next pose relationship here from this one to here, okay? Where you can see a pattern here, right? We're basically creating this nice movement that just basically comes through here and then basically uh, finishes up more or less with a weight shift over that right foot. Okay, but there's more. So once we get through here, we're gonna get this follow through happening on the antenna. Okay, now we're in a really stretched pose here, right? And what James did here that I think is really brilliant and what sets James apart is that he could have just had this little guy 
finish his movement over that right foot and then push off that foot basically and just go back screen right. But instead of doing that, because he's already got a couple moments here where we're just doing pose to pose, he did a really nice thing here where he decides to basically push his butt out and keep the motion happening. So the character doesn't actually pause. He goes down into this anticipation pose or the squash pose and then just rotates out of it and then picks up this foot here because all of her weight is over here, right, basically. And from here, he can start to step out with that foot and, and put something solid down here on the ground to then shift the weight over, okay? So let's back up here in a moment and get back to the antenna here. The antenna, right, we got our drag, we have our overlap into our follow through because, and it's followed through by the way, because it's overlapping the action, okay? So the, the body is continuing to move through its paces and then the antenna have to recoil over that, that extreme pose, right? So after here, they kind of pop back up, okay? So they hit their most extreme point down here so they have some place to go back into it. So they're overlapping that action so we get our follow through, okay? Um, again, anticipation pose because we're gonna go here and we're going to step out with that screen right foot, that left foot, okay? And we're basically now leading the action with that foot because the body's gonna come back over it now, okay? So this foot here is gonna be able to push the body back screen right, okay? So here we go, now we're pushing through and you can see a clear arc happening from the previous pose into here, which is really nice. And we're starting to now get a really nice sense of, of arcs and rotations through movement, right? So you can see that the body for the most part is starting to push out in a direction, right? And then you'll see like, I drew these lines of action here because these really nice poses on the fingers and the on the uh, and the arms are complementary to the line of action and also the path of movement everything flows really well okay everything's connected so again i talk about clean shapes and then paths of action and you know lines of action is all part of that as well so these arms and and fingers here leading into the body leading your eye this all leading your eye um, this rotational element of the the screen right top arm and fingers leads back into the body down into the line of action and then this finger uh, these two fingers right here and this this arm as well um, eyes leading you screen right right and then of course the body line of action here up into the antenna as well so there's just a really nice sense of contrast there between the two antenna and then from here we're gonna push off and start to uh, get this foot off the ground and push the weight over screen right, okay? Left leg. Again, everything here leads into the body, okay? And then this, of course, up here, just connects with the line of action. You can see the, the, the shape of the back of the arm and the back going through the head out into that arm, um, again, line of action or the uh, line of sight through here, body through here, everything is leading us screen right through that arc, okay? Again, weight transfer over that, that left leg, screen right, and then of course, uh, I mentioned drag over here because our hands and arms are dragging behind because the body's leading the action, okay? Um, and there you go. From here, we just basically come over the top here. We're gonna bring this um, this whole leg over and the body is just now exiting and from here we just go okay so we have a nice arc here where we're going over the top here very cool so that's a basic breakdown of it and so I, I want you to put that in contrast or at least a context sorry context <laughs> not contrast contrast is great but I want you to think about it in context to the 12 principles right and, and the major ones that are at play here right so we've got stretch and squash, right? We've got leads and follows, so we're breaking up actions. Things are breaking up in the way that helps create weight in the character and breaks up the movement to make it more interesting. We've got nice cadence of rhythm here. Where we've got some nice clean moments here. We've got some pauses and we've got some, some weight shifts with the, the rear end kind of rotating out screen right and the, and the body just kind of follows and then pushes off and then leads. 
um, line of action through the body up into the antenna to just create very clean overlapping shapes. Taking advantage of follow through. Um, and then of course, contrast, stretch and squash kind of stuff happening as well. Okay. Now let's not forget design elements, right? James is really smart here in how he's staging the character. And we just take advantage of the shape of the character anyway. There's just something inherently cool about this kind of tapered shape here that goes up in here, right? So you can see that straight against the curve and then just nice overlapping shapes where necessary, right? And then this head here is just interesting enough to kind of create a very simple, more or less kind of a triangular shape, more or less. Um, and then the, the color in the uh, lower uh, facial area versus the upper just creates a nice contrast in, in, um, in color there to separate the mouth from the eyes. So really cool, just a really cool character in general to animate um, from a shape standpoint. So that's the kind of thing I would, I would kind of go through and look at. And we can really get into more granular stuff as well in terms of how the, the pose relationships break down in motion, of course. Like we just went through kind of more or less the main poses and a couple breakdowns. But there's so much great stuff happening here, you know. And you can see clearly here how the body's pushing up, but the elbows are leading the action. And then we get that nice head shake in there for, for secondary texture, okay, which is important because don't forget the character's acting, right? He's not just moving through mechanics, right? The mechanics are complementary to the acting choices. They work together, okay? So it's really important to really be thinking about how mechanics can be used to elevate performance and how they can mix together and create what I call the holy grail shot, which is a mix of very active performance acting. Not just mechanics action shots and not just talking heads, but somewhere in between where you can take a piece of dialogue or a sound effect or whatever and start to think about how you can break down the mechanics to, to basically inherit some of those common sense inflections in the, in the voice, you know, or maybe you want to like go through a very active part of the shot very quickly and then get into a more smoother part and then maybe a pause in there and then like kind of like lead out into something else and just building a sense of rhythm through movement that complements the audio and invites performance acting into it, okay? So there you go. All right, so we'll leave it at that. Um, that's a very simple breakdown. I think that's a good one for the first one. I'm gonna try to do more of these every week, but I would encourage you to um, leave comments and I would love to hear your thoughts on this kind of shot by a guy like James Baxter and some of the things he's done and how it applies to your work. And also just the things you maybe observed that I missed. I would love to hear your feedback. All right, if you have any suggestions or shots you'd like to see me break down, um, let me know in the comments. All right, thanks for watching. I appreciate your time and happy animating. Talk to you soon, bye.